Welcome back to Race to Win, the sailing podcast. Today we're back in San Francisco Bay with Alex Huang from the Sequoia Yacht Club. And he's agreed to share with us a video from his boat showing some common tacking mistakes. And then we're going to show you what a great tack should look like. I myself was actually there for this race. I wasn't on Alex's boat, L2O. I was racing on another boat and had a great time. After the race, the Sequoia Yacht Club shows the replay up on the big screen while everyone eats just amazing food, best food I've ever had in my life. And they were also looking at a video of some of the things that had happened. Alex's boat, L2O, was a well-sailed boat. But on this particular day, they were missing a crew member. So everyone had to switch around and do different jobs. Or as we say, the crew was out of position. This resulted in a lot of common mistakes that we see in, in less experienced crews that we can share with you. For example, here they are approaching the windward ley line. They tack and then just get into all kinds of trouble with an override. We had a lot of line out there. We had an overly fast turn. So you had the gym out flapping around and everybody's looking at that. It's making a lot of noise and distracting them so they're not seeing that the red line's about to get sucked in. There it goes. Look, it's just about to get sucked in there. Now, how could, you know, could get a better video than that? Lots of different factors that can happen. Perfectly good sailors and and uh, then disaster, just, just here we go. The first step to clearing an override is to remove the winch handle. It just gets it out of the way and also when the override does clear, you don't want that to pop out and go overboard. Instead of unwinding, the first thing I always try to do is grab whichever end is free and pull up sharply. Without the winch handle in, a lot of times that'll break the whole thing loose and off you go. At this point, L2O is sailed past the ley line but finally, they get the override undone and they start grinding in the jib. Well, uh, this is, this is our, our spinnaker trimmer and he is grinding. He's determined to get that thing in because we were yelling at him, hurry up, hurry up, we're, 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 losing, we're losing boat lengths. Well, boom, he grinds the knot all the way into the block. Uh, we, just, we just ripped the knot off and this is a very slow maneuver, ladies and gentlemen. Well, now you see proof of why everyone's always saying, tie the ball in as close as you can to the jib. Um, and Alex had a little confession to make. So the knot was a little bit of the culprit. So yours truly tied that knot. It, <laughs> it should have been uh, quite a bit. I mean, it was a, it was a ball in and it was, it, was kind of, it was kind of long. And uh, if, I'm kind of glad it was. Because if it wasn't that long, when it hadn't parted, he might have just kept grinding and torn the bottom of the sail in half, too. So, lots of things happening there. And now that the knot's broken loose, they have to tack over onto the other side. And as you can see from the graphic, they're just sailing the complete wrong direction at this point, long past the ley line. They are rerunning the jib sheet, getting the knot retied on the other side. And then, they're finally going to tack over and be heading the right direction. When this trouble all started, it was at about 48.28 when they first got that override. And now we can see that by the time they're going the right direction again, the timestamp is about 50 minutes, 20 seconds. So they've lost almost two minutes because of this series of tacking mistakes. Alex and I looked at this together and talked a bit about what he thought caused this problem. But again, before all of this started, you got to think about what caused this at the beginning. One, my pit person was not in the pit, so they weren't watching the lines. Secondly, well, it really had to do with the fact that the release was happening at, a, at the wrong time. And my, the, the driver actually was rather new, and he turned way too fast. And he didn't have somebody that was being aggressive and tailing the, the, the new sheet coming in. And even, even if they did, that would have sucked that red line in anyway. One of the main issues with the mistakes for Alex this day was that his crew was out of position. Now, this is a good, is a good chance for them to cross-train and practice other positions. Um, of course, having consistent crew is so important for a successful racing program. And this is a pretty good example of what happens when life gets in the way and people have to do things they're not used to doing. Let's take a look at another tack. This time, again, they're approaching the windward mark and they run into some more problems. More than, more than anything else, look at, look at the sail. It's out there, it's at 45 degrees. So it was a, the, the, the helmsman obviously turned 
too fast. And instead of helping the trimmers out with this big sail, it sails way out there. They're gonna have to haul all that stuff in. Well, in hauling all that in, the tail of the spinnaker sheet that was sitting on the on the lifeline got sucked in. So I'm looking at there going, what's going on? Why is this not coming? And we're pulling on this thing, we're yanking on it, and we'd look back and go, oh, that's what's going on. That doesn't look right at all. Okay, so obviously they're not going to get that one undone very easily. Now there's a big old knot, and there's about four full wraps of spinnaker, uh, spinnaker sheet in there with the jib sheet. And they're going, well, we can grind it out. Well, that's pretty much the wrong impulse. It's not doing anything. And they're saying, they're, okay, they're going to try to unwrap the green jib sheet. But instead of trying to take the winch handle out, they're trying to do it with the winch handle in again. That would make it a lot easier. Just take the winch handle out. But, okay, we'll live with this one. So next thing we're going to try to do is try to get that Gorgonian knot off. It's really, it's just, it's just Hank that's looped through itself on, on the lifeline. It's pretty close to the... Uh, the jib winch, but this has never happened before. And they continue to struggle to get that knot undone for almost a full another minute, and you can see on the replay there is a potential crossing situation there. The other boat's on starboard, they're on port. But it looks like um, they are going to pass clear ahead here, so they have the time to get it undone. Alex almost got the knife out to cut his new spinnaker sheet, but it all turned out fine, and now finally they're going to be able to get tacked over and headed the right direction. So let's take a look at how long this cost them. So here's the start of that first tack at about 1 hour, 12 minutes, 20 seconds. And by the time they get it all straightened out, they've sailed far past the ley line. They get tacked over it again at about 1 hour, 14 minutes, 47 seconds. So it's almost two and a half minutes that they lost, plus now they've gone past the ley line. Uh, even with these mistakes, L2O still did manage a fourth in this race. Uh, they got out the next week, and they had everybody in their proper positions, and we'll show you what a good tack looks like. There are five basic steps to a good tack. Preparation, the pre-release, the release, the fast grind, and the fine-tuned trimming. So when you're preparing for a tack, you should clear the working sheet, remove the winch handle, and take off all the wraps but one. At the same time, the person who's going to be grinding should load up the winch and put in the handle. Next step is the pre-release. As the boat starts to turn, let out just one foot of line. The pre-release is really important because it gets a big Genoa in front of the spreaders so that it can backwind slightly and move quickly to the other side of the boat. Once you have that backwind, you're at the release. Blow the sheet off of the winch completely and make sure it runs free. With a jib that's over 100%, the helms person should slow the turn of the boat slightly to allow the team time to grind in the sail. Brings us to our next step, which is grinding. Now, if you do this right, 90% of the line will already be trimmed in by hand. When you're trimming in that sheet, do it as fast as possible, hand over hand. Once you get to grinding, you want to make sure the grinder is in a well-balanced position. If your grinder's not huffing and puffing by the end of this, they're probably not grinding as hard as they should be. It's really important that when you're grinding the saline, you don't over trim. You want to give the boat a chance to accelerate after the tack. That brings us to the final step, which is trimming. So the easiest thing to do is to put marks with tape or a pen right on the sheet so that the grinder knows, okay, I grind to the red mark, and then I'm going to stop and bring it in slowly, allowing the boat to accelerate. Finish up the tack by cleaning up the lines and putting the winch handle away. Do this right and you'll see a beautiful, fast, clean tack, just like we saw here. Thank you so much, Alex and the crew of L2O. And uh, hey, I hope to see you guys again next time I'm in San Francisco. Thanks, Julia. Hey, this is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we've got some really strange things that have happened in the next couple of weeks and I'd love to send you some of these clips, uh, things that you would never imagine. Sounds good, Alex. Thanks again. And I will see you all next time. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can find more on our website, www.racehues.com slash podcast.